scholarship and the other half is the SLAP scholarship. So the SLAP scholarship is just when I was in the middle of this uh, PhD. So I started my PhD with SLAP funding and then government scholarship comes in to cover for two years and then UM cover the rest. So in a way, I am a uh, multi-funder <laughs> student because I decided to do my PhD anyhow. You know, I just, okay, tak apa. I start dulu. Cari duit tu nanti, you know. So that was me. So maybe that resonates with this multitasking kind of thing. Tak apa buat dulu, nanti fikir macam mana nak solve, you know. Uh, with the risk of one, that's the risk of okay? it. Okay, so currently I'm an associate professor at uh, Department of Mechatronics, uh, Department of Biomedical Engineering, but my bachelor was in Mechatronics Engineering. So I was from UIA, Gomba. Um, I had uh, my schooling years, I never stayed in school asrama, and then UIA Gomba is just like, I'm, around, I'm from Kajang, like Jessica, I'm from Kajang. UIA Gomba is just close by, and my first experience living by myself was in overseas, in Sydney, Sydney Australia. So, um, I got my mechatronics engineering degree, and then I decided to do something that has to do with human, that has to do with um, people with disabilities. I design machines for people with disabilities. Right? So that's how I ended up in uh, University of Sydney, Australia, PhD, Rehabilitation Engineering, and I finished in 2010, directly come back here and start as a lecturer, as a young lecturer. I have been tutoring before that in UIA. I love teaching. So when I was in second year undergraduate, I already teach tutor, tutorial class, and lab for the first year. So that was my subject until my final graduation year. Statics. That's why when I teach statics, I was like, oh, this is my makanan, routine, you know? So statics, that was it. Um, I'm currently in ADAC, um, heading the teaching and learning. We have a new division, we call teaching and learning innovation section or division. And um, I've been in ADAC since 2016. Before that, when I first started, 2010, uh, I got my first baby 2011, secondary 2012, and during that time I was a coordinator of a new program, prosthetic and orthopedics. Uh, bachelor in biomedical engineering, specialization in prosthetic and orthopedics. It's so the very first degree in Malaysia, I think in the world, because engineering and prosthetic orthopedics. So do you know prosthetic orthopedics? You know, you know you mean, um, artificial limbs and you have to do braces for people with disabilities, right? So it was a very first degree program. Imran here is one of the batch number six, number five, seven, batch number seven of the degree program. And at the time, you know when a new program comes in, you have to do accreditation. I was put in as a coordinator. I was in second year of service, not knowing much, and given the responsibility of doing the accreditation of the program. So I learned on the job quite intensely. Um, and I learned also by practice and by difficulty and by challenge how to juggle between new motherhood and also new programs. So I have two babies growing up at the same time. Actually three because Zara and Pair are two and then the program itself and then in the program we have each batch 25 students so there's like all my babies also and every year there's new one, new one, new one so I'm, yeah, I'm a mom. Okay, so naturally I tend to, I, I, I learn or picked up the skills of uh, doing many things at such intensity in such a short time, right? So. Um, after that, ADEC called me in to join them, 2016. So that's when I joined. In between, there was a gap year where I'm not holding any position. Um, happy to do my research in my lab. Um, I organized an international conference during that window. IFES, IFES is my uh, functional electrical stimulation. Um, we use electrical current to stimulate the muscle in order for the muscle to be able to contract and produce function. So people with paralysis, they are able to um, get movement and get the health benefits. And even 
functions. So people with parents, the, the wheelchair user, they can stand up and walk and things like that. Therapeutic, right? So I'm currently the board, executive board member of IFS, international level. So they just had the voting and yeah, somehow I made it. I was you know, nominated and voted and you know, made it to the executive board member. And we are organizing another international conference which is happening this year in September. But those are the things that, that's happening around me. Um, as a rehab engineer, I call myself a rehab engineer. Currently, I'm also a visiting clinical consultant in PPUM. So in PPUM, we have the rehab medicine department, the building, the, the Madara Selatan building. And at the ground floor, we have a clinic we call Create Clinic. Clinic for Rehabilitation, Engineering and Assistive Technology and Exercise, something like that. So we call it CREATE, and people call it Robotics Clinic because um, you use technology like robotics and devices to help people with OKU, uh, uh, disabilities, yeah, stroke, TBIs, uh, spinal cord injury, um, CP not so much. Uh, we still limit our, our patient pool because we're just one year service. So we are still limiting our patient pool not to go into pediatrics yet. So CP mostly are kids. Yeah, but um, we can see great improvement. Those who have been with stroke for six, seven years, within six months, we can see large improvement. They can walk better because of, you know, um, medicine is limited to a certain extent. When it comes to rehab, you really have to put in extra things like technology and robotics and motor drives and electronics and yeah so um, we do have uh, can be 20 plus plus patients that are that's in our list what we need to today so as as an academic i have students like you guys too phd masters um, innovation awards and uh, i was in nona i was in BFM, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, nominated for UNESCO Award for Popularization of Science in 2019 from the UNESCO Malaysia for uh, nomination. Primarily, I think, because of my Mummy's Lab program, some of you are new, so you might not know about this Mummy's Lab. So it's good. Okay. That was my. So that's another um, naturally driven or derived project of mine. It was 2014-2015 and we mothers in biomedical engineering department said, what do we do with our kids during the school holiday? Let's just do something together. So myself, Dr. Belinda, Dr. Mas, Dr. Mas, Dr. Wani, we just got together to Juliana, Dr. Farina, Dr. Aisha. All the moms, the young moms of biomedical engineering. So, oh, let's let's gather our kids and we do some program for one week during the school holiday. Eventually, we open it to public, and eventually it becomes second round, third round, and now it has been 2014, 2022. It has become a brand. Um, we produce modules. We go to schools. We go to rural areas. We go to Sarawak, Miri. We go to Segamat. We go to some during PKP. We had our online, fully online program, and we produce our own modules and we copyright it and we trade money and we sell it. So those, those are, you know, my multitasked side business, <laughs> side gigs, right? So um, I hope that gives you some credential for me to speak about mul academic multitasking for four hours with you. So I hope that will help you. Um, uh, no, get to know me a little bit more and if you have any questions anytime about myself, about my background, about the topic itself, throughout this session just stop me and ask. Yeah? So okay, we're ready for our first part. Okay, so um, we'll do some brainstorming slash uh, ice breaking at the same time, shall we? Okay, so I've introduced myself. I would like to invite um, any of you to start to introduce yourself. 
and perhaps um, address this point here of being academic. What does being an academic mean to you? So you can have a few minutes to ponder upon it. Yeah. What does being an academic mean to you? You can take the time to talk to your friends beside you, and then when you're ready, just volunteer. So you don't have to jump in to hunt for right now. Okay. When you're ready, and when you're ready to volunteer, just let me know. Um, I'll put this microphone over here, and we'll give it maximum two minutes. Very, very, very 
rewarding um, place to be in at the same time. Thank you, Natalia. So that's the perspective from a quite a mature ongoing uh, academic Good morning everyone. Um, good to see that we are from different, different faculty. I'm from Delta. Uh, so uh, prior, to, uh, prior to opting to become academicians, it was a fast decision for us due to personal situation as well as the passion that I used to have teaching. I was in the uh, Ministry of Health as a Delta officer and then, uh, in year 2016 as a specialist. Uh, I would like, I would really like to uh, organize CBD programs, roadshows, even when I was working, because I'm the specialist number six for the country in this field. So very few of us, so we need to create awareness, even among dental officers. Even if you ask the private dentist, they wouldn't know why, special care dentistry. Uh, it's still not that level yet. But the first specialist came into Malaysia in year 2012, so just 10 years old. And to get the facility, usually you will come under the, uh, if you want to open, uh, make, create a specialty, it will be a dental chair borrowed by either Pete's dental or, or a maxillofacial. So we will go in with the dental chair and then take over. <laughs> so we are in with a, in a kind. So it, uh, teaching is in that ministry itself. And in fact, my first posting was to teach the dental therapies, the dental nurses. Uh, the only one college in the whole Malaysia government in Penang. So I, 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 at that time when I entered on the first day, I feel proud. Okay, at last I, I'm, I can not only be a dentist. Dentist is not my first choice, by the way. All Indians love to be either medical doctor, lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I'm that majority. But yes. I'm glad to be the minority now where I need to go. At that time, I was studying in the dental faculty with depression. Now, with Right, that actually God chose me a right pathway. Yeah. You won't know at that moment, later you know that, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. you all just go with the flow. Yeah. So, uh, that, that teaching, as Prof Raymond as well uh, mentioned, teaching was a reason I entered as well, beside my personal situation. So, it's been in, uh, exactly during the COVID 2020, I was still in Sarawak. I learned uh, through adversity as well, being the state specialist, meaning I have to go for to me uh, to traveling a lot. And they had a really lack of facility for COVID time. Imagine it's our So we actually turned our dental clinic sewing the PPE. Uh, I learned to sew at that time through my dental officer. So, so learning through adversity. So our experience matters. So the year 2021, March 24th, I got offer to back to true prosapi. In fact, within a month when I inquire, they're going to start the program that September. So in March, I came as a probably rescuer for the faculty as well for myself to invite. Uh, when God's inviting <laughs> relationship. Uh, so to start a new curriculum. So when you mentioned about the coordinated piece of the Zero knowledge, yeah, I'm a coordinator yeah. for doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my uh, Melbourne experience is not even doctorate, it's a level 8. Master like doctorate. But now I am level leaving level 9 course for doctorate. So it's, I'm still learning, but being a teacher. And as I mentioned uh, earlier to Dr. Azar, 
research was a shock. I could do media research presenting at national level, case uh, report, uh, without knowing the uh, ISI. What, and I think uh, I don't know about <laughs> ISI, uh, ECSI, uh, what, that, what that means. <laughs> but now I have to go for it because I'm still under probation, uh, even though I'm a permanent staff. But um, this is my going to be the final year, three years, right? To to come out with at least one ISI publication. I got a lot of publication for all the other non ISI text related. So I'm aiming for that. So it's something new terminology research comes in the picture. I know academicians have to do research, but I didn't know that it's going to be that level, impactful level, international level, within a short period of time. It's a requirement. But yeah, I, at least by doing the uh, we did, uh, my aim is just go with the flow at that situation, whatever it is, and try to cope with it. As I've entitled today, multitasking, I am facing it individually, but I want to know from the experts how, how it is. Uh, None of us are experts here. <laughs> you know, I mean, the experience yeah. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm two and a half year old as a commission. It's not now we're starting walking and running. Okay. <laughs> Good luck right. today. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Quite personal, it's 
very personal to me. So um, I'm not judging anyone, I'm not blaming anyone, okay? I got a, an SMS. Uh, Azhar, you, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to work so hard anymore. It's, it's, it's a calming note, but in a way, you don't have to, you don't become the coordinator anymore and you get that message. The, over, uh, over an SMS. So, in a way, I'm happy. I'm just like, yeah, I don't have to do this anymore, you know? But on the other side of me, we're saying, so what about what I have done so far? All the things that I sacrificed and, you know, the, the challenges and me soldier, soldiering in, soldiering on, you know, that kind of thing. So I came back home. Of course, um, it, the news came formally to me up a while later, but okay, I came back home and I told my husband, I'm so glad I didn't let you guys away. I didn't sacrifice you guys as I thought I should. I'm so glad I still put you guys, of course my husband and my two kids at the time, because my family was away, you know, we just... I did not put you guys second over be, um, below my work. I didn't put my work first and as in invested so much in it that, you know, ignore and, and I still did whatever I have to do as a mom. I breastfed my, my, my kids, the whole, you know, they don't touch formula milk. So that was also a challenge. Um, of course, uh, my husband's mom and family lives close by, so that is a really also great healthy living Fiji too. So in a way, it's, it's, it's um, my support system. But at that time, it felt like um, I'm so glad I didn't put you guys, who are actually my first, to be my second in order just to achieve. So it resonates with what you say, whether it's worth it to you know, cheat your way and kill, your, <laughs> kill, your, kill yourself and things like that. So that, that reminded me of this, this, this thing that I wanted to share, but I don't know if it's um, yeah, I hope, I hope it, it, it makes sense to you and because in the long run, I learned that um, your life and your whatever you do is for yourself first and your job is your second identity. You, the thing I like about being an academic as well, let me just answer that way, what do you think of being uh, an academic? The thing I like about being an academic is the ownership of whatever you produce. If I work in a company, let's say I was in Proton R&D doing power window for Proton cars for my intern, I wasn't enjoying it simply because no matter how, how good I do, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm being paid salary to do that job and it becomes the company one and no one knows that power window is from <laughs> other side. But in academic, whatever you do, your name is there and I I don't know, it's a, it's a thing, I think. You have that self-satisfaction, even though it's a small, small, small conference or a little module that doesn't even count in your KPI, your name is there. So from there, you get to build who you are. So for me, um, for me personally, academician is a profession that, that, that jives with me the most, that I feel, um, even if I die and have to re-choose my path, I think I will still choose this part because I'm happy when I can explain things to my students because I was I was um, in my batch during my study years in UIA I was the one that would teach people would come to my room and look for me and get help for the assignments and I would explain and they would they like how I explain so I think I'm a natural in that sense but it's not just that I, I told my mom Mama Azan nak jadi cik dah besar Azan nak jadi cikku I told my mom Mom said, you can jump on the you can jump on the university. At the time, at the young age, I didn't understand. Check the university, it's not work. Check the university, and the university teaches, teachers, check the teachers. In case you don't understand. You teach people who are, are smart. So you, you, your benchmark is higher. Like, you know, my mom tries to explain it in a very child, understandable level way. So, oh. My mom is a nurse. She was in PPM. She's a PPM nurse. She was a pensioner of PPM nurse. Nursing, nursing school at the time, we don't have the doctorate program and things. So she was a tutor. So 
my mum said, uh, jadilah cikgu universiti. Macam mana ni cikgu universiti? But the teaching part, the satisfaction that I get, that, that warm feeling to, when people say, when people come to me confused and when, when they go back to, ah, oh, you know, that. I'm happy to do that every time I wake up. Secondly, is the, as I mentioned, the name that comes with it. Whatever you do, a little, little, little tiny thing, you can put your name and, you know, yes, it's fine. Even though, okay, it doesn't count. Yeah? So, um, that was my name. But then I realized, um, I, I have that responsibility to do more. So then, the research comes into the picture. Because when I was young, also I like to, you know, do things that have not been done. I like to, um, you know, experiment and share whatever I'm, I'm doing so in terms of, you know, poster, drawing, you know, things like that. And I, I write, I write story book when I was a kid. My first story book was published uh, by by this publisher. The title is Impian Garis Pulau. And it was derived from my visit to one um, tropical island with my family, Pulau Apil, in Johor, Skamat area. I think it was too young to remember where it was. Well, so I, I realized, oh, I, I'm actually um, a research person because I can't, I'm not that imaginative like musician, you compose music out of thin air or, you know, but I, 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 I like to write scripts, but I have to have some basis. That's the research part. And I realized I'm good at that. Okay, so have you heard the word ikigai? Ikigai? Yeah, so kind of I found my ikigai. That's why I'm happy. I'm content. And I don't care if the KPI is what I will not. Yeah? If I'm happy doing it, I'll do it. If I don't believe in it, I will not do it. So that's how I work. And Alhamdulillah, it has helped me um, become bulletproof of whatever stress, you know? Because when you're passionate, when I am doing things that I believe in and I like doing, the things that doesn't count from Matakasa, from, from obvious, you know, KPI, whatever, it's not counted, but somehow it will be counted. Somehow it will be counted. People will still recognize you. People will still, you know, during my interview for my associate professor, she was just, just sharing. One of the panel said, um, his first words were, the work you do for mommy's lab is exceptional. And that was, it wasn't even in my CV. It was like my tiny, Contribution to society, sekolah segaman, you know? It doesn't even count anywhere, but that was his first impression, that was his, his first permukaan to my, my session, and was very honored to, oh, so you know this, you know? And it was done out of passion, out of, you know, like I mentioned, the, the, the moms, you know, having to send the kids where to bring our kids during school holiday, let's do a program, that's why we go, let's go to the moms lab. So, my 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 take on this is if you believe in it, you go for it. If you don't believe in it, don't do it. Even my my publication just three last last, last year, 2022, just three. One of it is Q1, it was accidental Q1. You know, just put it in. Sometimes you aim this for being Q1, it has to come out. The one that you just let's try, let's try. Now you're curious about Q1. So, my guess is we can't be too strategic about it, but if you're true, truthful and honest to yourself, there's nothing you will um, regret. Nothing you will do that you will say, oh, you know, the things that I did during my uh, coordinatorship, that was the ones that, you know, at the time it was like, blood, sweat and tears and you know feeling lonely and you know and all this as a young person that's what you feel. But after that it really really helped me because I got my connections from there, I knew how things work in terms of paperwork, I was forced to do it. So whenever a young academic say this is too much, I say, hang on, like you say, at the time it will feel like it's like worthless or it's too much or I can't progress because I have to do this, I can't even do my grant paper. You can, that's the way. So we'll, we'll check on that.
quite big. Of course, the things that are intangible, the ones that are uncountable, it will be comfortable. One way or another, at a different time in your life, inshallah, it will. It's just that you have to be honest and, and, and do it with your heart. The way. Sometimes you don't do it by your heart, but this is another strategy that I will share. It doesn't have to be everything you're also passionate doing. It doesn't have to be. Some things you can just do. Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll discuss how we can pick what to do in that sense and what to do in the other sense. Okay? So let's move on a little bit. How much do you enjoy teaching, research, supervision, admin, contract, uh, society contribution, business and commercialization? Okay? So we have this, that stand up. We have these little post-it notes here. Just to reflect on yourself, okay? Come over, come over. <coughs> we have this octopus here with us. Okay? Take any piece of paper, different colour, same colour, up to you. Go back to your seat and write down as many different things that you do. I mean, not, not item by item, but uh, like teaching and having. And just use these octopus hands. Different up to you. You can use different color. You can use same color. And put it just around the hands of the octopus. If you feel that they are similar, put it with the same octopus head. You you feel that they are not similar too far. Put it on opposite hands. Okay, let's try that. Okay, we have 40 seconds more. You don't mind, I can make a mother sick
how might not be um everyone in the class. So that's fine. And if it's not a reflection of how good you are as a teacher, but if you're above a certain number, you should be fine. Um award and recognition in KL. We do the statics, music in statics class. Those is those are ones we got some awards for that and some others. Research, society and administration. This is the mommy slide part I mentioned and the society. Uh, sorry, the mommy slide and the society um, media and then administration as I mentioned, program coordinator. So if we could put this as a quadrant or in, in a way, so let's see. Finding paperwork under credential, TNL. So it's more than four actually. It's like octopus, octo, lapai. And even the head. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fixed for itself. I don't know why it fits. I just had to do it, you know? So even here, you just go, ha, ha, ha. So let's address. We are doing a lot. We really are doing a lot. And for you guys, you are halfway through, one leg in, <laughs> slap and slap. And for you, you just do your first year PhD, so you still can decide if this is your ikigai or not. Yeah, but at least by discussing with uh, senior friends here, you can get a sense of what life might be. Are you planning to stay here or go back to the country? Do you speak Malay? You don't speak Malay, so you're not from... Okay. Planning to go back? Maybe become a lecturer? And you go back? So this is a good intro class for you of what to expect. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just Malaysian University, I do not know.
Ay, tabulitin ko. I need to see this dress. So, I intend to rescue the pets. So, now I'm overwhelmed with seven cats, two rabbits, five chickens. All are saved from... Let me send my kids to you. <laughs> so, all, all these are um, rescue animals. But I feel like the previous owner is not taking care of them, so I offered. So my day starts early at 5. First thing in the morning when I wake up is clean their poo. Every single day. So it's exhausting. Rasa macam nak buang. I feel like I want to throw away all those. Tapi bila angkat dia, tengok mata dia memang kesian. So it takes me two hours to clean up all these pets punya. To feed them, to be a clean and poop. And I'm very particular about kalau poop sikit je ataupun dia punya tofu liquor tu sikit je ada pee ke I clean. So it's, it's very taxing. And I sleep at 12 my room because I have to clean it twice a day. Including the chicken. <laughs> you know, the chicken is... Ah, so <laughs> even making water is just so stressful. So that's one issue. So when I arrive in office, usually around 8, 9, I don't know why, but the administrator or the NLT's assistant semua akan kerja I. Ada je benda, every day. Or, or sometimes I have to cover other people's mishaps lah. That's why I, that I don't like. And, um... Keep it short, eh? <laughs> uh, I feel like it's always other people punya mistakes or mishaps I have to cover. Because why the HIV takes I'm one of the reliable persons and I don't say no. And they expect if I, because I'm single and I don't have kids, I have less commit, family commitment so I can say yes to uh, after office hours when I give this, which I don't have. So. Thank you for sharing that. It's very true. Yeah? So, yeah, you
So not only that mantra, I am actually uh, the multitasking. I, I'll give two or three example like this morning because uh, the Quran is uh, that's one of the grand you need is tomorrow. Uh, I think Kita Selangor or something. So um, thank God, yeah, my uh, my husband was driving, so I can actually edit in the car. Even though it's early morning, five o'clock is nothing. But four, I wake up four thirty because I have a two weeks. So at the same, every time we face many challenge at that particular, I have to thank God. At least I have kids now. Because ten years of marriage, I lost three. So every time I face many challenge uh, to feed. Uh, in fact, last year when they are still young, uh, I teach. Thank God, they still half the half of the year online. I feed both of them and conduct the class with off the video. <laughs> uh, so I was thank thankful. Okay, thank God is online. How am I going to go? Because at that time it was babysitter number three. Even babysitter, I'm able to. We are paying them, but they still are okay, it's enough for two months. So I actually, from Tasca for two months, changed to, because they got some infection in the Tasca, so end up in uh, another babysitter, third babysitter in a year. So uh, every time, many, many challenges, I just say, thank God, I'm doing And always, I don't, I'm actually against your principle to compare with others, because everyone faces their own challenge. For me, it must, if I say, it's hard for someone else. It might be just nothing. So uh, it's the same challenge. We are the same boat. How we face it? We might think our boat is small. For them, it's big. Oh, I want maybe somebody wanted to be like Jessica, but they only see the outside. They haven't seen my flashbacks. Uh -huh. So everything counts. It's individual, and be grateful. Uh, go with the flow because all we are all so I believe in God. So He is moving us from somewhere and it always will be good. So even though at that point you burn out, I have said this, I will end my life, <laughs> to be frank. <laughs> and actually I almost end my life uh, at 33 years, not because of commit suicide. When I lost I my second child, full term, uh, supposed to be elective CSEC, end up emergency CSEC in hospital because of placenta rupture. Uh, placenta broke in the hospital. If it's happened in the room, a house, I would have killed. So I always put that scenario. Jessica, you have gone at 33 years, but now you have 41, you are still going on. That's why I love the word go with the flow. So multitasking anywhere uh, uh, as this morning. And then uh, why wait? Just never waste the time of thinking. I love, I actually hate people who overthink because you are wasting time by overthinking, nothing being done. I have many friends as such. Uh, the incident in, when I was 33 years old, the incident that I almost died changed my perception as well. And it's, it's a little bit of a negative thing. I said, no, don't waste your time thinking, just do it. Whether it will be fruitful, even failure is a this outcome. We learn from the failure. Like I think this is the fourth grant I'm going to apply. Three previous grant never. I really regret to inform that. I still keep the letter as evidence. I work hard for it. Yeah. So that's uh, my actually for even a day. Like for example, tomorrow Wednesday and uh, Thursday is the worst. I was thinking morning U UG undergraduate clinic uh, clinical supervision, afternoon PG postgraduate clinical supervision. In between mental mental meeting, lunch hour, and also the last day, uh, that is 19, oh, to submit my undergraduate student, the supervisor is supposed to submit in the system. So it's like fight to the end. <laughs> Thank you.
life, and then you lose the most of your time setting. So uh, I put out of shape immediately. <coughs> so at night, I try to run. Uh, also, I have like uh, I have a wife, so I have to contact like one hour every day. I have my mom also, so like 30, 30 minutes. So yeah, that's my day. Because when I'm driving, 
I use this and a little bit of this. When traffic light is red, this is still functioning, this is still functioning to the pedal, but now I can shift into my smartphone. Clear all my emails. Not email lah, WhatsApp lah, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the easiest. Emails you have to, you know, it's a bit more. Kan tak jawab kan, tak baca tapi tak jawab. Pas tu suka, you know. So, yes. As long, okay, when we talk about multitasking, we talk about this brain part. Yeah. But let's put a step back. <coughs> like Prof. Pena mentioned. While you are listening to music, you can still cook. That's your meal then. Yes, can happen. Myself, I have a baby, I have my two boobs. <laughs> I have my baby. This is still functioning. This is still going on during online class. <laughs> Teaching. Because they are different domains. As we two boobs. <laughs> okay? But you get my point. If they are involving different parts of your body, Listening while talking. Yeah, because it's here and it's here. At the same time, while you're listening, if the music is not lyrical, this is our research, yeah? If the music is not lyrical, if the music is like soft background tone, this can still happen. The thinking part. I know my thinking when I drive back home. That's why I love the Vivian Kajang, I, mean, I mentioned, yeah? Morning, two hours. Going back maybe one hour lah. Morning is the because everyone has that deadline of eight at eight thirty o'clock. You know? But going back is a bit more flexible. This is driving, yes. As long as I decide not to change lanes, then it's safe to do this thinking, like, you know, that, that pondering. Because sometimes you sit on your table with your laptop. Ready to write the grant or whatever, but this one hasn't. This is still at this stage. This is ready. This is ready. This is ready. The perut pun dah kenyang lah. Everything is ready. But the reason you are blocked, you are mentally blocked, is because this is still here. <coughs> what if during your car driving, this is your brain is still is already doing this part. Lipat maju. Folding clothes, cooking. My brain is already doing this part. So by the time I'm ready for work, my kids are at bed, sleep. When I sit down, my thinking is already at this level. That's why the time I spend when I open and I switch on my laptop and look up the near atas, I'm already here. So these parts, this. Monday, but you know, sometimes I don't get. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. This is my my brain thinking. This is the time for something that is cognitively demanding. It needs some level of maturity. So I allow myself to let my head think. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. I let it more time. So I lipat more baju, I basuh more mikan, wash the dishes, clean the clothes, do other things that involves anything of, of not my head. Because I'm saving my head thinking. That's why when I have kids, I have four kids. Mama, 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 mama. I just use this part <laughs> and this part and this. Muscle here. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. If I never let it go inside my brain, because it will interrupt with this, my level of thinking. Let's say I'm writing a grant. I, I'm aiming for this mosty grant. Don't tell, right? Aiming for this mosty grant. Then I have to. It doesn't come. Drive to car. Uh, drive to work. By car. Still doesn't come. It doesn't come. It may take a whole year. I still haven't applied my most right because I don't have time to sit at my brain level of thinking mature enough to write. What will push me 
is if I have a deadline that I have prepared, I am prepared for, then yes, okay, I have to work for that deadline. Let's say this is 30th of February, 30th of March. Then I prime myself for this. I will do all the other non critical, non crucial thinking part. Maybe sign Imran Union form, check candidate defense report, you know, all the superficial part. But I save my big thinking, deep thinking part for later. So you need to understand it needs to go to a maturity level. Sometimes you just get that aha moment and suddenly it goes, whoo, whoo, one night, boom, suddenly. I'm so happy with myself if that happens. La. But to get this, maybe you need to understand what's your trigger. Is it exercise? Is it shopping? Is it enough sleep? Sometimes not enough sleep will just let you stay. <laughs> no matter how long the time you give. Because you want, you, you worry so much of not moving. You have to differentiate movement and action. Movement. Come to work, get the thing back in, pack the thing back, go out, prepare dinner, prepare food, prepare your bunch of bajoo, whatever, if you play with your pets, yeah? and then move over again. Tomorrow morning, movement, answering your doctor, can you come for this meeting? Okay, I come. But that's movement. Action means you have invested something and you strategize to produce that. And that's an outcome. Whether the results that successful grant or not, that's second method, that's beyond your control. Whatever is in your control, you need to strategize with your big thinking here. Okay, so I hope this is the first level of multitasking that I can share. Yeah, we, there's so many people who who manage to do this while doing something as long as, as I mentioned, they are not the same body parts. If this and this, can. <laughs> this and this, yes. You know? But to think of a uh, technical paper, at the same time to think about journal that you, uh, you are the main author, and another paper, and another grant, it will not work. Because then, you are using the different part of the brain and you are switching in between. That doesn't work. So if you have to multitask, okay, pick your battle. Alright? Um, but tell me, I have to continue to you. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> How's your multitasking day? Oh, okay. Um, I cannot do one thing at a time. I have to use at least two of those body parts. I cannot just use one. Um, and uh, because I actually have, I, I don't have a neurotypical brain, I have a bit of a neuroatypical brain because I have ADHD. Um, so part of that means that um, I find that when I'm doing something, it actually triggers me and it motivates me to actually, I get, if I'm, if I'm doing nothing, I'll get into a rut. So I have to have a couple of things at the same time uh, because that triggers me, gives me more ideas. Uh, and luckily I've already kind of like, I think, gotten a bit of that, but I'm not at Dr. Azaz's level because um, Dr. Uh, that's why I want to learn uh, from Dr. Azaz because I have observed her for so many years, she's a very good friend. Um, because um, my I noticed that emotions actually will, so I have to be very careful about how I manage my emotions because that's what's going to impact my ability to actually multitask or do anything and I find that what I need to do is one is actually do things to make me a little more happy, and that includes listening to certain types of background music, the lyrics, uh, gratitude exercises, um, and also I learned that if I start doing something um, and I cannot focus, I just stop and do something else. Uh, so many things good. Uh, but if I start doing something, I get that focus and I can get it done. But then I get I know you. You say you hate people who overthink. I hope you don't hate me. You don't hate me. Because <laughs> I actually overthink because I cannot. Few friends at the moment, I, I just got it done and it's like oh, somebody stop it and go back. Put the stop. <laughs> I, I try to. It, it, it's very hard uh, because I have to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and tweak it because it never gets done. And just a little story from you, just a tiny one. Oh, one thing I learned for my multitasking is that I actually need 
partners. Um, I've never been able to publish ISI because I never submit it. Um, because it's not good enough. Uh, I've set the key. I finish and then it's there and I don't click send. So then now I have partners who co-publish with me and I'm actually, I actually got like the highest number of ISI and WOS was my faculty for last year. And it's thanks to my two PhD students. They are the opposite reader, like Dr. Azad. They get things done very quickly and they send it off. Um, and they help me with the deadlines. They say it's time to do that. And timeline, I don't see that. So they actually really help me and say, it's time you have to do it. I won't do it until the very last minute, but then I do it. And then it gets, you know, so yeah. Thank you. So, so um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, the fact that you need a buddy is because you need to identify this line. For me, like if you don't have a deadline, you will. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not ready yet. It's not uh, good enough yet. Let's tweak it more. I can't find a good problem statement yet. Let's tweak it more. And it goes on and on and on. But if you have someone like Dr. Uh, she, you run a workshop on how to handle this, right? So if you have. A chance to see the poster that Amira has this ADHD tuned method. <laughs> yeah, I knew about it. Yeah? So it's to identify this. When you reach this, usually people will work best under pressure just because the pressure is the timeline. It's the external factor that says, like, for me, um, maybe it's a deadline. For someone else, maybe it's a boss saying something. Or, you know, for different people, it's okay. We are different pieces of puzzle, so we behave differently. It's okay. Yeah? It's just that you need to be able to be blind of what is. Yeah, just go with it. That overthinking. Yes. Overthinking. I have a blind ear and eye for what is. I like it, I do it. I don't like it, I don't do it. It's in here only. So sometimes it's not too good because I can come across as too vocal, or like harsh. Too harsh. harsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll get to that. I do have friends who come and the go me lah. Sorry, you know. So yes, and I accept that. Okay, but because I have a blind spot for that, and I I know it has to get done. But I know it get it needs to get done. So I, I'm good at identifying when to do it, to, to get it done and of course over here I'll put my best effort. Let's say this one. This is when you realize you have to work on it and this is when you realize you have to submit it. Best effort and then let go. You have to let go because the world doesn't revolve around you. They are, there will be other factors, so keep going. But it will come back, let's say it will come back, or it will come back here. Keep learning, keep learning, so that's the learning process. It's okay. Right? So multitasking, we go back. We, we know, okay, this is a very, if you have literature, that's not okay. I had some literature with that. Uh, also the share, just put it, uh, my mother. Uh, there are three papers, or four papers, Three sets of four papers. Ah, satu set, okay. One set of four papers. So just feel free anytime. They just 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 double that this person. Okay. A lot of studies have shown and proved that multitasking is not good. Okay. It's not good. Multitasking, as what people understand it, it's not good. Okay. It takes away. Um, Focus, it takes away you know, your attention and the good things come, the really quality that thing comes from deep thinking and if you keep being interrupted, you may not. Okay, so those are some of the research papers that I've found. La. Maybe when I just, I, as I searched multitasking and academic, those are things that come out. Not much, but I think it helps. Um, Purely, the reason people multitask is because of limited time. Like Prof. Raymond mentioned, if you value time, you will want to multitask. If you don't want, if you don't value time, like uh, what? Um, what's the word? 
otters to check so give it a bit of wheat I don't do anything but I have to follow up and I work on it again maybe this time shorter this time shorter and then I send it off to a journal paper a uh, journal 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 paper journal may take 3 months ok let's say it is 3 months yeah. and then get back to me revision Alhamdulillah revision kalau reject ok start balik but still, <coughs> your time is done. This is take it, take it. For that research paper to get your final one is to be accepted. So this is your celebration. Woohoo! Your celebration. Yay! Copy or this code, apa pula? Okay. So for you to get that, that's how long it may take. If it gets rejected, start again. Revision. Wait again. Maybe another revision. Baru accepted. So ini dua kali lah. Dua kali sekali hantar, reject. Second time hantar, berjaya. Contoh eh, contoh example. So celebration. So this is what we call done done. This is what we call done.
not overlap. Somehow, maybe a little bit, but usually you do because this is the same U. This is the same U. Then and then, then, you see? And that is why academics, the reason we have to multitask is because whatever we have to get done and done, there's a lot of gaps. Un uh, removable gaps. These gaps. These are the unremovable ones. My friends who does accreditation, accreditation, oh, that's, I have done it too, and it's like this. Accreditation. Sorry, yes. What's the unremovable gap? This gap. Because you can't get a paper written, it's not like assignment. Assignment? You pull on for two hours or four hours or six hours or eight hours, I don't know. And you submit them. And then the only thing you have to wait is for the lecturer to give you mark. That's all. But for us to get our paper accepted, that is the done done part. That's a lot of this. You have to wait for your co-authors to put in their input. You have to wait for the reviewer. You have to wait. And this you cannot remove. It's there. And it doesn't make sense to just, I will focus on research paper number one only until it gets accepted. Come on. Because you'll be doing this. And wait, wait, wait. Begin lah. Jogging, you know, oh, my research paper, uh, maybe you will reply. So you just wait. And you don't do anything in between. No class, no clinic. That's when you become less efficient. So I decided, okay, while I wait, Write technical paper number two. Technical paper number two. Technical paper number two. So this is my technical paper number two. Bye. Okay. Yes. So this is my done done. So at least I know during this period. Okay. Let's say this is Monday to Wednesday of week. Week whatever week it is lah. Week fourteen or week uh, week seven. I don't know. So I know, uh, I spend this time to do this, I spend this time to do this And it, it makes sense, if there's nothing here because you're doing this But you, know, you still have to wait Let's say they say, oh, out of scope from our journal Find another journal, that's effort Find another journal, maybe you need to reformat Okay, so another work here Then you still wait And then, sorry Still out of scope, find another journal. Yeah, Ibran, sound familiar? Find another journal. That's why I say, don't let the gap here. If you can get it done, because otherwise, if you decide, oh, the day, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'll do this, paper number four, I'll do my thesis, I'll do my clinic, I'll do my other things. So you are leaving it hanging on your table. Don't leave it hanging on your side. Always do your part quickly and pass it somewhere. So let someone else does the job. So the paper still moves. Basically, if you decide, I'm tired, I'm gonna not work on it yet. If it's really for you to think, like as I mentioned, the face just now, the, 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 this one, this part. I think I still need this time. It's not, it's not, reaching that yet. If you are actually doing that, yes, that's okay. Let it. There's no way, there's no dots because you're not waiting for anyone. It's you, yourself, making that gap. So you lose time here. And when you decide to do, because maybe you do this and this, it's okay. But then you lose this paper time when it could have been in another one's review. See? So then, Maybe it becomes better, you submit again, you wait again, maybe it gets revision and finally it gets accepted sooner or slightly later than this. Remember Dr. Nasra mentioned? Everything was accepted during this week. Everything was accepted towards the end. The first three years, it was just this. Reject, submit, reject, submit, reject, submit, reject, submit, reject. So this is focusing on uh, general paper. And then during the final year, this one accepted, this one accepted, this one accepted, this one Because you let it move by you or by someone else. Once you
you decide not to do anything about it, you have to switch to this mode. Switch to this mode. So invisibly it is like, yeah, little dots, but it's moving actually. While you are doing your something else. Yeah, so then, I always remind my students or colleagues that, mana yang brand tu, what happened to it? Okay, let's push it somewhere. If it's sitting idle in my laptop, let's push it out. At least it's in the movement. But of course, as I mentioned, every movement takes effort. So pick your battle, what's the best effort? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm currently at the stage where um, maybe two or more papers are uh, in the same box because it's like accidentally in the same period like for example, uh, paper that you go on to my grade so at the same time, the program and paper to paper that you go to, I cannot do this and then paper that I can do like yes, and I'm at that stage right now where I think it's I don't know, I think it's doable but I'm worried about the quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, what do you think? Okay, that's okay. Can I say something really yeah. about the quality? Um, I've learned that as long as you meet a minimum quality, it's fine. Um, yeah, we don't need that high quality to publish in the US, so don't worry about the quality. <laughs> the, the reason I'm worried about the quality is because I have been rejected so many times, so I. I'm the kind of person, I've mentioned before, I'm the kind of person that over 15, so it's like, there must be a reason they keep letting me, so like, I need to do it, I need to do it, but at the same time, I have other things to do it, at the same time, I have other things to do it as well, so, yeah, that's my okay. program right now, yeah. Let's take that one, eh? Uh, how many of you have that same?
Would you like to spend some time to do that and share it? Maybe Zai, uh, is it time for break? It's 11.05. It's been two hours since we start. Would you like to have a break while you do the gun chat thingy? Okay, alright. So we'll meet again in maybe 10.
tell him, I'm supposed to do this, technical paper number two. But then suddenly, admin comes. Ah, oh, we get, we need to get this check. Can you check for a while? Can you check for a while? Check for a while. Okay, I'm going to check for a while. There. It takes away what you could do here. That's why I say, if I refer to just now, those who came in later, we had this finger and we had this brain. If you refer to this, when things like this, like this little interruption, it can be even your paper, like for example, you write kan, paper datang, kata, uh, not suitable, need some formatting or whatever. So maybe you, you, can, you can address it just so that it moves on. You need to let things move on. Okay? Then you address it with, I use this analogy, the outer surface of your brain. Don't let it, you know, if this is admin, can you check this for a while? My first question, has anyone looked at it? If anyone has looked at it, someone has looked at it and said okay. So half my job is done. Uh, what do you, and then I can, maybe I can ask a question like, uh, what specifically do you want me to look at? Oh, just look at the learning objective. Oh, okay, I just look at the learning objective. Because I do not want my mind to be occupied inside here. I'm still saving my deep thinking for my technical paper. Whatever happens at that time, times, times, uh, what's the next? Frame. Time frames. <laughs> at that time frame, I will do it either the outer surface of my brain or just my finger. I will not sign. Sign lah. But, this is my my soft point. If a student comes in, doctor tak faham. I'm doing this. I try. <laughs> I will melt and I will say, ni, okay, student, student, tak faham. Need some understanding. I will spend some time there. This is my soft spot. <laughs> Can be my student undergraduate, postgraduate, I will drop everything off, and I will attend to that. And I'm, I'm happy to do that because if they come to me and ask a question, it's a learning point for me too. And it, it, it means, let's say this is my postgraduate student, eh? uh, PG. It means I'm allowing this person to move on. In the end, this moving on, however much that is going to be done, done, and my name is there too. This done done is achieved by this student through this student for myself. So I would drop everything off if someone asks me a question here, no matter what I'm doing. Unless I'm in a meeting with Dato BC, okay, that's not going to be here. But if everything else is negotiable, because here comes the, the, the next thing. Delegate. When you have postgraduate students, you are actually training them. In a way, you are delegating tasks. Because in the end, when you when you're doing the celebratory paper, like this, remember I said my Q1 paper, the accidental Q1 paper from Hari. Yeah. What's the accidental paper? It was it originated from a research methodology class, literature review. The topic was on COVID and physiological factors. Yeah. Topic is very. Timely lah, timely. So let's try and submit it to a to a Q1. So that's not much I did here, and Dr Hamizan helped to check here and there, and it got approved for publication, accepted. So it's a bonus point. If I say I don't have time for you yet, Harry, I want to get this done. Wouldn't I have lost this? Yeah. So. Having a a gun chart like this, sorry, let me go back to the gun chart. Having a gun chart right here, having a gun chart like this would help you visualize what am I doing right now? Because it's very like problem management. It's about time management. What am I doing right now? And you have to allow yourself to get into, let's say this is your block that you have to get done. You have to get it quickly at optimal pace and maintain and rest. Not many people can shift, let's say, from 
this job to this job. Okay? You need to quickly climb. As I mentioned before, maybe you are driving, you need a baju, whatever. So you are priming, 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 priming. So when the time comes, okay, when the time comes for you to actually do it, you are actually already in halfway deep in your brain. So the, the, the message here is, if you are able to visualize, I love Google Calendar, a Google Calendar, Google Calendar, the planner thing, so I can see in what day, what am I doing, in what time, what am I doing. If it's empty, I'll quickly fill it up with this kind of work. The grant, the technical paper. The student, I will check, check, okay, and, and I have to, uh, I have to be specific of how I can help. So I have this method of diagnosing, where I mean, sometimes students will come and, for two, I'm lost, I don't know what I'm doing. So if you are, okay, see if it's really case parah lah, bring them out for coffee and for me it's a break time because you need break too. Not every time of the day slot you have to have that little break to you need time to break too. So you take a break together with them. In a way, they get that emotional mental support and you get that uh, that uh, movement back from them because they are in a way they, you are delegating or you are working together with them. Right? So um, so there's a uh, few components there. One is time, dimension it. So you're starting from um, talking about the dimension a little bit. Then the time. At every time frame, ask yourself what you're doing. If you're doing, if you're resting, make sure you are resting. I like to rest while I check my WhatsApp and give more job to people. <laughs> That's my way of resting, right? But then there's the level of thinking, the, the level of cognitive um, activity that's going on. Okay? If possible, spread it out. You can't write two technical papers in one week. If that week is already done with one technical paper done, the rest of the week do something like easy ones, like admin, maybe that's time for you to catch up, um, to to hang out with friends or for some spatial, or some spa, or some shopping. Yeah, you know, so you, you, we are human, we need to have time for everything. But it's about having the right priority of what to do at what time, and then there's the level of thinking. Okay? We talked about, for those who just came in, we talked about the, the other body parts, so you can do things like folding clothes or cooking. Yeah, sort it in. But Allow your brain to think about it when you're doing that. Mm. Get some idea. Or you know, if it comes natural to you. If it doesn't come natural to you, it's okay. Yeah? Um, so, I think so. yes. I think so. Do you recommend any other apps other than Google to help you assist in programming or planning your tasks? What works for you may not work for me. So, <laughs> for me, Google. Me, um, oh, sorry, Google Calendar is the most natural and the most um, the one that works most for me. Some other will have their own software. I'm not a tech person. I'm a human person. So the only tech I will use is my WhatsApp, which is my email, and my Google Calendar. That's all. But there are techy people who have certain softwares. I can't remember the things because they teach me and then I'll go mm -hmm. and then I forgot because I don't use it. But it doesn't it doesn't keep naturally to me. <coughs> but for someone else it may. So if you find one that works for you, by all means, try it out. Because for me, having to use technology is another bar chat down there. Another <laughs> chat the one to get it. my question is, how do you when you get that interruption, um and then you have to do something else. Like, how do you remember that? <laughs> like, like I'm doing something, I'm really into it. Sometimes I get an interruption, and I'm like, okay, I'll take it. It's even a minute. Sometimes it's even a minute, but then sometimes it ends up being one hour, or sometimes it's even a minute, and then something else comes, something else comes, and I literally forget that I'm doing this thing. How how do you remember that you're doing something? Very good question. It's about 
about me priming myself, if I have been priming it all along, during driving, during lipat baju, I know I have to submit this paper, I know I have to submit this grant, for example. If I have been priming it all day, or all week, then whenever interruption comes, because you've primed yourself, you're, it's not done yet. In your head, it's, still, it's not done yet. It's still here. Whatever you do, it's here, here, or here, or here, or here. It's not here. It doesn't occupy this part. You don't allow it to occupy that part. So when you're priming, doesn't it go in there? Yeah, yeah. It goes here. When you're priming, yeah. So when the time comes for you to do it, you actually do it. But then when interruption comes, you only allow it here. You only allow it here. And you take it as a break lah, from that red block box. Then you will, when it's done, you will naturally. Apa aku buat tadi? Oh, tak sedari, okay. Maybe uh, it will come. It will come because you have been. It's like you made a promise. You made a contract with yourself that I'm going to get this done. So even how, even though because we administrators we get interrupted more than others. So, but because at the back of your mind, this paper is not done yet. I'm going to find time. I'm going to go back home to Kajang at 3.30. I'm not going to go back straight home. I'm going to stop by at fish, Manhattan Fish Market and complete it. Then I'll go pick up my kids. I have to make that effort to make time to get there. There's a difference between academic multitasking and multitasking. That's the octopus. <coughs> and there's this big... Malaysia, what, it's not Malaysia, what do you call this thing? Iceberg. Iceberg? Thank you. I know kind of has it. The whole thing is an iceberg. Okay. There's a lot going on down here that is much, much more than what people see. So for your case, Imran, you're still here. It's not mutual lately. But it's building, it's building, trust me. It's building. Just in fact, you have three proposals. It's still here. It just takes time and effort to get it afloat. And then our KPI only see this. So if you want this, you have to put double triple here. Then you get this. And for you to get it out, you have to focus to get it out. It's a lay. Sambil. Sambil one fish, one fish, and then oh, there's a nice coral. And then you get distracted. That's it will come out. But if you have it like this is the octopus and it's really pushing. I want to get it done. I want to get it. This is how I share, how I think you can think of how it gets done. Because you 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 sing pan and it's in the let's say most time, you have to have a date time. You want to go for that most time. You have to have a date time. What needs to be done, what needs to be done. Study what needs to be done, what are the paperwork, what is the requirement. Some of the requirements maybe you can get your RA or student to help fill up. So your, your brain, when it's the same thing, but your brain uh, worries about the, you know, Alah, to this number, then I see number, you have to write it again? You know, that kind of thing. Some, because it's paperwork, it's paperwork. But the, the deep thinking part, that's where you should focus on and prioritize. Whenever you have free time, if it's not done yet, prioritize on that deep thinking part. Then you can you are able to push this up. Okay. Maybe tenggelam di mana ni? Tenggelam di mana ni? Close and it goes back, sink back down. But at least you're putting effort here. And the multitasking world, these are all your admin. Let us have a five minutes, ten minutes, and then it becomes one hour, and then this big shot comes. <laughs> doesn't help you much. You can say if you're smart, you can use these other things. For example, um, like I mentioned, if you're passionate about it, something will come out from it. The one that is maybe not comfortable in a KPI standard, but it's comfortable by other means, in, in other framework, in other, in other dimension. So yeah, okay. 
So I think we're quite clear on the examples of academic multitasking and actual multitasking. The actual multi the, the, the multitasking that we we have is like a, a just liken it to our brain as a CPU. If you have a um, computer those days when you have a CPU, open too many windows, you know, and it becomes like dead, like slow. Everything becomes slow. Because your brain has to do this and that and that. So it switches from one job to another. It's like a CPU. One job to another. If you add another one, then if you are multitasking as in this multitasking, so you are hurting your brain because you are not getting anything done, but you are getting movement. So you are showing to people that this nigga, this nigga, this nigga. Some, I realize the, the the latest KPI they have given submission of grant they count. So they are trying to uh, acknowledge that people that uh, the movement is also movement also counts. It doesn't count as a 50 marks as a, as an outcome that counts as like one or two marks. Those people say we we put effort. We want we want it to be counted. Okay, now we count but I give you one. Instead of if it's published, it's 50 up there, right? So if you uh, multitask, your brain is jumping back and forth between the tasks, focusing briefly one at a time. So your brain, the middle part that I mentioned, this part, this part, is keep switching. And that is energy. The jumping itself is energy. Like your, your CPU, you have so many going on, it gets hot and it gets you know, slow. It's like, it's like uh, spending energy just to you know, shift from one place to another shift. But you don't get anything done at that one place. And then you shift. So your day is filled with eight hours of things going on. But it's not done. You want to get that done. And eventually that done done. Okay? So uh, mix your activities correctly. As I mentioned just now. Okay? If you have your technical paper, it doesn't come. Technical paper, maybe you want to mix it with the lighter job of you know, supervising. So um, you need to be able to identify what is the more valuable and what is need to be done, but uh, not really that. Okay? So here, don't be forced into meaningless interruption. Refuse to split your time according to someone else's schedule. And finish one thing at a time. <clears throat> hold on to this, please. If you want to get things done, please hold on to this. Refuse to split your time. Sometimes you get, you know, um, call for uh, proposal or call for nomination, and, and the deadline is Monday, and they give you on the Thursday. You know what it means, right? You don't have enough candidate and you are a potential candidate. So you are fitting into someone else's agenda. Refuse that. Unless you believe in it. Lah. If you believe in it, you will say, oh, that's an opportunity for me. But you think, ah, it's really valuable to me. Yeah, you're my boss, but... <laughs> you know, have that same. Refuse. It's a hard word. Refuse. Because you can't really refuse, refuse. But ask yourself, if, do you really want to do it? If you don't want to do it, yeah, finish one thing at a time. There are other examples of this. Maybe you can, maybe you, anyone wants to share any examples of this? Those we force you to make this This is where we get. Satu tangan buat ni, one hand do this, the other hand do this. Sometimes you feel bad, sometimes you don't want to say no because it's your boss or something. Um, I don't know whether it's not really worth me just sharing. I think I've said yes, um, but then I don't do it yet because I don't want to and I just do my thing until it's done. And then only I go to the other thing, but it's very last minute already, but um, yeah. <laughs> I get it. That's I get it. She's a very kind-hearted person. She will try to accommodate. I think you you accommodate. Well, some people don't accommodate as much, and some people accommodate more. It's about nature. But um, the idea here is, if you can say no from the beginning, 
try and say no. Uh, maybe that does it. I don't know about you. You want to say that? distracted if there are too many incoming notifications or requests from outside. So what I do, I have a uh, notebook where I write down what the things I need to do. Then I divide them into uh, easy tasks, moderate tasks, and very difficult tasks. So I finish all the easy tasks first if I can. And once I've done it, I check it or I click there, done. And then uh, for moderate tasks, that one we have to balance it a bit. Uh, and then for the difficult tasks, this one, in my week schedule, there's always a free time between Friday evening and also Wednesday mornings. So those two slots are the time that I uh, reserve for the difficult tasks, like writing papers or proposals, grant proposals. And during that time, is when the time when I switch off my uh, handphone. Not not switch off, but silent. Silent my handphone and WhatsApp, and also I close down the window for <coughs> me. Otherwise, I get distracted. So usually between 8 to 12 uh, Wednesdays, and Fridays 2 to 6 p.m., usually nobody can reach me, so that I don't get distracted. And those are the two slots that I'm using for my very difficult tasks. I don't know whether it helps, and I don't know whether this is a good thing or not. Yes, yes, I practice that. I try to <laughs> the admin will just pop 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 yeah. Yeah. We will just kind of pop the bubble back. We pop the pop the belly. Okay. <laughs> so somehow you have to deal, but um like you mentioned, if you can block your time, block your time. Last time I wasn't very smart. I just do go with the flow, you know? Then in the end, uh KPI is sixty percent. A lot done, uh, a lot done, so tired, but keep it sixty. And I ask myself, no, work gentle, you know? Then as I get mature, I get older, I get more mature, block times, writing time. For you, it works, yes? Um, if it works for you, keep it. And people will understand that, yeah. Masya, Friday afternoon?
Tell me, Emma, it's a little bit of 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 a
I'm the kind of person, yeah, if I don't know anything, how do I come to that? I just Google. How is it?
identify if it's a quick job, like you mentioned, easy or moderate or difficult. If it's easy, yeah, two hours, ch -ch -ch -ch, done. If it's moderate, okay, then I consider where in that week my Google Calendar I can slot in. If it's difficult, you ask a question. Should I do it in the first place? Is it worth going for? Yeah. And how do we deal with it? We'll cover that uh, after this. Yeah. So those are the literature that I shared with you. Um, essentially, no one has coined the term academic multitasking yet. No one has framed that the way that I'm putting it through. Maybe there is someone somewhere, but I can't find it. So we have to be able to differentiate that. Yeah. Because these are the effects of multitasking to faculty members and academic work. Uh, publish or teach uh, multitasking academics. So um, I think it's uh, I think it's this paper. I like it because it says you tend to prioritize the task that has the higher rewards. It's natural to us. The KPI paling tinggi is ISI publication. So a lot of our effort goes into the technical paper one because that's potentially our ISI publication. And because the reward is so high there and the teaching, people will say, oh, uh, research like 50%, 60% and teaching, you do like best teacher, which mana lah best teacher pun, your mark still macam, sama lah macam everybody else. The, the variation is not there. So it's less rewarding. So that kind of tunes people not to invest in their teaching. So that's what the problem we have in ADEC. Because ADEC is in charge of uh, building skills and competency in terms of teaching and learning. But people are not naturally inclined to want to be a good teacher because the reward is not as as big as the reward that you could get if you get, get a big grant, a multi-million dollar grant, you know. So people's effort tend to go there. So that's, that's uh, I think he's the head of school or something like that. Uh, Professor Van der Steed. It's somewhere down the table. Yes. So yeah, I think that's a good way to read. Um, and and um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention about this. Sorry, yeah. he was there. This one. This way. My favorite hashtag. I came, I came to with this hashtag myself, and then I read that people, eh, hey, you don't jump out. So I am. So I can't say that. He's doing that. Oh, you have been here as well. So the speed of effect comes in. I mean, when I do research, I. I share my research in my teaching. So my teaching will always have something fresh and new from my own lab. So when the student comes to class, they can expect to see something like that in the Tazas lab. Or my new paper or my new student's work. I even bring people back to my class to help with the students, um, uh, to, not tutorial, but discussion sessions. And then, you know, they get to know what it runs work and things like that. Teaching. Spill over to admin, admin spill over to research, research spill over to society, society spill over back to teaching, teaching spill over back to society, research spill over back to society. So it all helps. So it's not like you're doing four things separately in terms of effort. You're doing one thing, but it's around, you heard know, the word around pang, right? Um, it's like the King Triton's, King Triton's, um, what, what, what's that? Um, what's that word? Saram pang. Trident? Trident? No, Tiga mata. Tiga mata. Empat mata, lima mata. This one. For the international staff. So, oh, Trident. Um, you know King Trident from the Little Mermaid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we have this. Oh, Aquaman. Aquaman? Okay. Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you do one effort. One society involvement when you go somewhere. And then from there you get your research paper out, you get some research, you get some teaching, you get to involve your student, you get, you get to, you know, you get to do a lot of other things. So I, I really believe in this field of effect. And at first then my admin, my first paper was about my administration task. Other people, they do admin as an admin lah. But I try to find an angle where I can write about it. So like some data I write about it. In ADAC we write, you know, our administration task is kind of unique in a way, we could write something about it, you know? So, just forgot to mention about that. Alright, um, okay. Um, I think this is the woman, actually woman. It the, the, the message is it doesn't 
doesn't happen only in women. People always say women are better at multitasking. It's not true. It's not a, a gender bias thing. It's just that naturally women were put responsible for many tedious menial the right word? Tiny, tiny parts at once. Sambil masak, you cook. Eh, sorry. While you cook, you make sure the water is boiling. While the water is boiling, you prepare for your son or daughter to shower with the hot bath. And at the same time, you make sure that the washing machine is switched on. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny things. Traditionally, that's the that's the way. Yeah. So people always say, oh, women can multitask. It's not true. So these people um, shatter that um, perception. Um, even men can multitask if you practice. Even women can't multitask if they don't practice. Yeah. If, if the, the girl uh, grows up not having much responsibility, just study saja, he will have that same inability to multitask. Okay. I'm talking about multitasking as in uh, the functional level, not the brain. So that's why um, it's a different level. The brain functional level is more um, uh, wiring and everything, but um, actually multitasking is more functional in nature like that. Okay? So that's the energy thing. Simple life. We clock in, we go through our day, and we go back. Work ends, drive back home. Tomorrow start the same day. And it repeats, and it is and in the middle, you realize it's energy. Energy to get prepared, to you know, to dress up, to meet people, put on a good face. Energy. But when you reach to office, for example, you have teaching and research. So you switch between research and teaching and research and teaching. And then at home you do your house chore, you do the house chore and then you sleep. This is a simplified version. All these gaps, that switching is the energy that happens. Okay? And then reality, supervision. I have rubber gloves today. Okay. It's ongoing. <laughs> what is that? And then my teaching every Monday. That's every Monday. Monday, Monday. After I go out to class, my, maybe I go back to admin work in ADAC and then maybe some, some module that needs to be done, community work, and then, and then come back home, house job, masak, kemas, masuk baju, you know? So it's, it's like that. This is the reality. Some are even like this. <laughs> if you're like this, please get help. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, which dimension am I in? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe it is, you know, uh, professional versus uh, relationship or, or uh, professional versus personal. So you have that extra dimension. It's not just that, but, um, uh, you know, uh, a typical one would be like this, because there's no other extra dimension to it. Like maybe your, your parents are unwell, that you have to go to the, uh, to take care of them. Your child is sick, or maybe your husband is out this outstation, so you will get that extra dimension, lah. Like, and you have to tend. Or you when you when this one, I hope I hope to learn. Okay. So hopefully not like this, lah. You see how much energy there is lost there. Nothing gets done. You just busy like a bee. And people like because you get their job done. Yeah. It's for you, what's in it for you? You have to ask. If you can see there is some pattern there, yes, definitely. Okay, as an engineer, biomedical engineer, I like signals. You read through, make kind of myography. Okay? But yeah, the noise. Those are the noise, those are the interruptions. The interruption. I have to go to oh suddenly the teaching part has to have to attend. Or the research part, or lab, tak boleh buka, kunci. Or, parents, get your assistant engineer to do it lah. Why are you run here and there? Yes. I know the answer that. Oh, yeah, transform, lah, transform. Please help me. Okay. 
the fact that I myself I have two main office, three actually, but because of the noise and the energy, I reduce it to two. I have my main office, the, the office in the department, I have my lab, and I have my edit office. But that's three. So imagine myself having to commute to the my this in block A and this in block C. So I decided I'm not going to enter my lab, uh, sorry, my, my main office because there's no one there. I don't need a silent four walls for me to work. I don't work anywhere. Okay. So I reduce it. So that's my noise. If the door cannot be open, I don't care. <laughs> I need it out, I need. Okay. So I'll just go to my lab and my edit office. Just between these two. And it depends on what task I need to do. Do I need silent time? Do I need to get things done? You know? So it reduces the office space. Any any one of you have experience? I'm not the type of person who can just sit in the office or lab for a very long time. I need to start moving. And my favorite place is the coffee shop, even though I don't order coffee. So anyone has that same I had during my PhD time, uh, but now I can't because we are getting, you know, I'm getting older. <laughs> so it's kind of like the noise that I get from the environment is kind of distracting me. So I need the four walls. <laughs> so um, that's why I have to set up uh, an office in my house, a uh, specific uh, room, just for you know to do the work done. Otherwise, I can't do the the, the things in the bedroom or. If, I need that place that looks like an office. <laughs> but did you used to be able to work anywhere? I used to, yeah. Before that. So it's a phase um, in our life. It's I like the um, it's like a phase I guess. Mm -hmm. Because when I was when I was studying, uh, during my PhD time, during my master time, and normally I will it's do my work stuff so about coffee bean, right? So that is the best. Um, I mean, that is the best and the most. What we call it. Um, uh, like performing like really good during that time, but now as I reach my mid thirties, I guess, <laughs> and, and 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 all and because of the, I think because of the tasks that we have as a lecturer, the academicians, there's a lot of things going on, so noise uh, kind of like distract me from uh, from focusing on my work, especially if I'm doing the writing. Before that, when I was doing my PhD, if I wanted to write a paper, even an article they wanted to publish, I can see it on the TV, you know, and my brother can like sing or whatever, and I, I, I was really so into it, I don't even care what's going on around me. But now I do, and I'm not sure why. Like I said, maybe the age factor. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about you guys, you guys are still young. So let's see, uh, in about 10 years, if you still do at the coffee shop. Let's ask Prof. What about Prof. <laughs> I 
I need to share something because it's I don't know if it happens to anyone else, but uh, I need background. Well, the background noise or background visual. Like, do you know picture in picture uh, concept? If like you have a laptop, you can view two things at the same time or three or four. So, background noise. Sometimes it's either noise or visual. So sometimes I can have a TV, not too loud. But I need that noise, like a background noise, yeah, to, for me to work. But if it's not TV, I have the picture in picture feature in my laptop because I love to watch stream. Like I love pe watching people, you know, leaks and sports of video games or whatever. But I have those small window, like at the uh, yeah, it's very small at the right side. No noise, but it's just small. So when I have to think, I watch it, but I'm not really watching it. It's just like a distraction for me to think. I don't know if it happens or it makes sense, but it, it really works for me. <laughs> yeah, it works for me when it was you too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I cannot make it totally silent. <laughs> it's gonna be like I'm gonna be dead. Yeah. It's like that. Way under the original version. Yeah, me too. I cannot focus at all if I'm doing one thing. So I have to put some music on or something to because if I want to like I want to read this paper I can't read it it's, it's too difficult so I have to listen something make my mood better yeah. then I can read it as an anatomy physiologist is that an, 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 an explanation is, is it because your brain feels at home when you have that noise or that visual visual noise lah. Then you start because that's your most um uh, uh, not, 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 the most comfortable time. Is that is that an explanation? The easiest explanation for why you need some form of background stimulation like photos or music is because it's to prevent us our brain from going into REM cycle. A REM cycle is like the first phase of the sleep. Yeah. yeah. So so when it stimulates us, it is just the noise, the background noise is just enough to make sure your brain is still awake. It is as because if it's too quiet, then your brain will think, oh, is it time to sleep? No? Yeah. yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> it's not sleep. Uh, for me, it sets the mood for reading. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I got. Uh, not only for. Did you go to school in Somalia? Yeah. You know how. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I do. Because I was there a long time ago. When they learn, everybody's learning that. Like, uh, reciting the Quran, can't read. They, they have parts, right? Parts one. So everyone's like, mm -hmm. and that's how they, the brain functions and picks up when everyone is noisy around them. Yes. So your so brain is so. already tuned, and this is this is uh, the mode where my maximum capacity of brain memorizing works. So when you want to study something, you look for that. Hum, because uh, because you guys, you 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 half past the Quran, right? When you like in school, yeah. at the school kitchen, mama, mama, you know, um, the read the read, I, I can't recite <laughs> like how many people recite the Quran as in the and the body moves, you know? Because I go to schools in the, I I went to schools in the Somalia. That that's how it's like. It becomes like a an Indian noise. Uh, so and then then the, the, the brain clicks, okay. I can memorize this surah, for example, when it's in that ambient noise that, that noise. Yeah, you get used to that thing so when you are in that environment you know you are you you like, you do what you what you think there for. Yes, yes. Uh, just like uh, for <laughs> when you go to the night at night for talking. Environments, uh, small light lamps, yeah, and yeah. that kind of environment. That, that's kind of the standard environment I, I made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like my friend Right. So I believe if, if you know what works for you, hold on to that. If you don't, you need to find. Dr. Safia has recognized that she has moved to the other place. <laughs> The middle of his face. Yeah.
<laughs> you make me feel young because I still have, I, I, if I really want some, because there are certain coffee shops that are not so noisy. Mm. But, you know, your kids are not there. For me, it's important for my kids not to be there. <laughs> Once the kids are there, my brain will go deep surface, deep surface, and I can think. Put them to sleep. But then my eyes will be like, Then, then I get frustrated. 
the car. But you tend, people who have small kids, they tend to develop that, that ability to just, uh, it happens or it doesn't happen. <laughs> you know? Okay, let's move on. Let's revisit. So admin work, okay. Let's say between admin and another admin, the gap is small. So maybe it's worth doing two things at once. But during the same day, if you have teaching and house chore at the same time, there's a big gap there. Then if you recognize the, the, the villain here is the energy to transition. If you recognize that as your villain, you will avoid it. Example here, another one, uh, between having to teach and having to sleep. Tomorrow is class. Tonight is sleep time. To come to the point of you having to go to class, you can't do anything else because you're like, have I done this, 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 this and that, this and that, this and that, have I put it out on spectrum yet? So that energy that comes to preparing for it. Okay? And here, let's say between research one and research two, or between your lab work one and lab work two, or between the analysis of the, there are two different things, but the energy that, so you can, if, yeah, instead of just different organs or different body parts, now you can also think of their parallel, but the energy to transition is not so much. That's why sometimes it works for me to have a time block for me to do real stuff, and I keep all the other nitty gritty stuff towards the, towards the end of the day, Maybe 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I can't think anymore. And at that time, I just do signing after one admin, after another admin, just the, the, the adrenaline that comes with, okay, done, okay, done, what's next, done, what's next, done. I get done, 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 done. But everything is surface level thinking, surface level, surface level, surface level, and still you get that sense of accomplishment. So I tried to strategize that way um, because I realized that the, the energy gap would not be too much. It's next, next, next. So um, if, we, if we can um, identify the those are I guess. I just want to share with you, um, actually, like, I'm not sure anyone from the Faculty of Business and Economy here? Anybody? No? Okay, so I'm from there actually. So the um, nature of our work is a bit different, um, where we, have, uh, we tend to have a lot of number of students and a lot of classes, because we have an MBA program, which is you know, it's a huge thing for us, and um, so that is actually uh, quite a take some time for us in terms of teaching. We are actually overloaded, so which means that we are not just teaching in the morning or in the evening, but we also teach at night, okay, in the weekdays and in the weekend. Sometimes we also have the class. Sometimes about six hours class on Saturday or in a Sunday. And that's the thing, it is sort of like the classes. So when the semester starts, when the semester, when the semester begins, then it stops. It's like, whoa, the classes, it's like, <laughs> like when every people stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You, you may have two or three days off from it, but still, when you finish one class, you know, you complete one class for that particular, let's say you completed your Monday class, and then you think about the Thursday class, and then you complete the Thursday class, and think about the Sunday class, right? So you, the, the, the thing is repeating itself. And that is where it's kind of hard to get, you know, that, that energy level to go to the deep thinking for the research paper or any kind of grant thing, you know. And that's really something that I would like to get some opinion from you, like, now how do we handle this kind of thing? Okay. Because it's really tiring, it's really tiring. Yes, okay. That's why we have sabbatical leaves. Research leave. We have 90 days. Do you know that we have 90 days of research? I don't know about contracts. Yeah, 90 days. Yeah. How much for that? Research. 90 days of research leave. What is that? 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 What is you can because there's no disruption. Maybe maybe some minor ones lah. I mean, one the admin let you are in charge. You cannot 
that way unless you negotiate like, can I just pass this part from one group to some other person but usually we don't do that and uh, because it's of, easier to not yeah, pass yeah, it's, like, it's like this uh, currently I'm on sabbatical leave actually for the 9 months leave yeah. right it sounds nice, yes, it does, but uh, the problem is that, like the nature, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of students, right? So, uh, PhD students is one thing, but we have a master that costs work. So, for every semester, we have this, uh, you know, we've got to take at least about five students, um, you know, for, for the uh, master thesis, you know, the, the final project. And this cannot be. Uh, switch off because they're still coming to you and you just need to uh, do all this kind of review and, and meeting with them and kind of that. So no no matter how hard you try sometimes it's still coming to you, you know, yes kind of thing. So like right now I get this feeling that okay I'm already about three months in my sabbatical leave and I come in and you know slow down. Yeah, slow down on this this faculty uh, work that I am trying to run away. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so that's the thing. I mean, is there any other way to do it? Um, it's hard to give a blanket answer because <laughs> people are different. But so, let's put it this way when I did my sabbatical, my aim was to, my only aim was to remove this part. My expectation is low. Yeah, okay. It's just for me not to have new classes to come every week. Yeah, yeah. But everything else is still there. Maybe the admin becomes minimal. Just so if you are expecting something, there's nothing going on. I'm free. Take take your own leave, lah. <laughs> take your own leave. Cuti aku nang. Then go away. Sorry, I'm I'm in tour. Turkmenistan, whatever. <laughs> Make up one country and go. Yeah, I need to go to Maldives. No, give give a country that doesn't exist. I understand. Oh, it's something new. I can tell. It doesn't have to come to that, but at least because as academic, it's our profession. Yeah. You cannot get away from the postgraduate student. Man, postgraduate study. Oh yeah. Postgraduate will be there because they need to graduate. And I always think um, postgrad is an extension of my work. I don't have to be there full time, but it's still going. So I, I love having lots of postgrad students. I'm not complaining at all. Um, classes, yes, because someone else can teach, yeah. especially any graduate classes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it depends on how passionate you are with the job. If you're not passionate, just let it go. Okay, clinic mungkin uh, tak payah lah. I'm not sabbatical, I can't come for the clinic. Yeah. So that reduces it a lot. So if you look at it as a reduction rather than a complete silence, yeah, yeah, sure. your expectation will be different and will be more acceptable of it. Because you can't, you are an academic, this will go on. And this is the time for you to invest. You, Dr. Wani, my friend, she's on Chuti Pesalin. And she comes, uh, she and she. Uh, at the end of the year, she was congratulated, congratulated to have the most paper. Well, what's <laughs> my friend? Hey, okay, you got that <laughs> Yeah. So because this is not there, this is not there, and she could focus on doubling or tripling of this. And in the end, this goes to your KPI, it goes to your SAPT. It's an investment. It's fine. It's okay to have many of these and this. So if you look at it as a reduction, yeah. True, yeah. Yeah, it is so, yeah. Um, if you can't take 30 days, try huh? one week. If you can't take one week, try three days. What's the criteria for this? No, 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 I don't know. I think you have to give in a proposal. No, it has to be based on the grant. Uh, which grant you have to put the number and what, what kind of work that you are that you need to do with that. that mm -hmm. Normally, mm -hmm. normally they will allow for the calculations. Uh, something that needs a, you know, like, like a break or something like that. Um, in one university that my sister is in, there's a form. Even 
think, oh, it's because you, as a head of team, I am a head of department. I can't just let you go just like that. I just, I still need some paper work to be done. But you don't have to take it too, you know, um, promise uh, one paper from this. You don't have to go to that extent. Just to let them know what you're doing, right? Yeah. If, if you are actually asking for data collection, you just have to report.
take home lessons for this, the proper planning of the tasks so that you don't multitask. But when you try to design something like Tata Azar keep on saying that if you do something, a particular project or goal, try to what spill over effect. Try to uh, yeah, so try to ensure that that project covers all aspects of the KPI. It's not all more than one. Yeah, not all as many as you can. So for instance, if you're doing a project on uh, let's just say mental health, so try to incorporate that in your academic teaching, your research, your admin tasks, your social obligations or responsibilities, and your mass media output. So that's.
when you do the first one, and then the second one is in your mind. You macam bila nak siap ni, kau cik siap kaya ni. Tapi bila tengah nak siap kaya yang first class tu, second class is in your mind. Bila nak siap kaya kedua pula ni. So macam, from, in my opinion, benda-benda macam tu, it's not really good. Um, it, it's going to take a toll on your health, even your energy. Sometimes I cannot sleep at night. When you cannot sleep at night, you wake up, you try to do your work. But when you do your work at 3 a.m., it's not efficient. So it's a lose-lose lose, lose battle. Yeah, yeah. So in order to prevent that, I think from the start, you have to manage it. Yeah. That's my end. Okay, um, uh, I think uh, the takeaway that I get from this is uh, more about the energy focus on specific tasks. So, how do you manage your energy so that you won't be uh, you know, breaking away and you get tired and you don't get anything done at the same time. So, I think it's how you manage the energy by uh, focusing on the specific tasks that you've already planned like on the gun chart, right? So you're gonna, you know, you you not be distracted. Like Kevin uh, Ryan said, you do project one, but your mind thinking about project two. So it's really important to manage that. So there, they will not be jumping from one thing to another. That's the first thing. And uh, I think number two would be, uh, this is also said by Prof Raymond about you know we're not just talking about managing our time, but we also have to manage our mind. So it's about mind managing as well. So you can manage your time well, but if you can't manage your mind, that is where you also will get tired. Because to to block all these noises that have you know that coming um, will actually take over the energy as well. I mean, will consume the energy as well. So you must know how to manage that so that you won't yeah, you won't get tired. Because I have these things uh, when people say that. You know, well, who is more tired in terms of their profession? Is it the person who works with their mind or the person who actually works you know, you know, in labor? Yeah. Yeah. Physically tired. So you would think, you would tend to think that people who actually work at the physical uh, work would be more tired, right? But it's actually not. Because those people, when they go back home, they got the sleep, you know? And the energy, like you say, it's like that. Because it's constantly like that. But the people who actually work with mine, this is the problem where the energy is not like that. I think you can show it much after you do a So that's why that's why for me, for me, this training is 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 really good, uh, I think, and it gave me this overview uh, or this new paradigm of looking at managing my time and mind so that I won't be like that, you know? Because I, I need this, the, the, the bell curve, the nice bell curve, you know? And, and, and this is very, very dangerous and I think it will affect your mental health if you keep doing this. Definitely. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Prof. would you like to add anything? <laughs> oh yes, uh, I now remember if I can try to interpret this kind of figure, it means that uh, if you have a sign in, uh -huh. it's the one people see, right? Yes. You want people to see you're focusing on one one thing, right? Uh -huh. But you have many yeah, harmonics, then you can see that two, two or two things, yep. two or three things. And then you have all the random things you are focusing on, you know, so your energy time. Yes. Diluted energy, diluted. Yeah, yeah. Because the energy is conserved. <laughs> it's In order for us to harness, we have to test a different workshop. Eh, oh. Different workshop, how to harness the energy. Now we are talking about how to. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are about how to use the energy effectively. We, we had this, um, this picture just now. Right? Yeah. Energy. 
Okay? If you realize that, then you know not to do this one and this one we have to do. So how to do it? Yeah? Okay. Number one, know yourself. Some likes to work in a flowering shop, some likes to work with the smell of coffee even if you don't drink coffee, some likes, likes to have some background music. You have and you don't compare yourself with others. Pop 
up as your identity, as your as as people will have like a oh the Tamazia is like this, but at the day it's like this. This this that's that's their contribution that no one can be. That's your identity, okay? The meaningful one. What makes what what is meaningful to you? If you really believe in it, it will resonate with other people. Okay? It may be not measurable yet, but do this more, and this is to create you to build your profile. Whenever I do anything um, that that um, that quadrant, yeah, for you to do that, to be able to to naturally have that spillover effect, you want that something to be this one. So that so that it's effortless in order for it to fall into four quadrants at once. Yeah, so this more to create you. So if you can do both simultaneously, your body is fine. If you can. You agree? Meaningful or something passionate, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Meaningful can be passion because you can't. It's very unlikely for you to do to be passionate about something that is not useful. But meaningful is always something that is useful to others. Maybe society work, maybe um, uh, an innovation, for example, innovation. Innovation doesn't bring you a Q1, Q2 paper, but it's like you build something new and it's a solution for someone that really, really needs it and a lot of people can benefit from it. It's really hard work, it's meaningful. But in, in fact, it's something that you. Can you use this one? Yeah. Impact is something that is quite subjective. Sometimes if you aim for impact and you don't get that impact, you become disappointed. But if meaningful, usually uh, in a way it will be meaningful. It will be impactful. Something that you can bring to the table that people will oh, thank you for doing that. If you can find that something, you know, it doesn't have to be measurable. But cumulatively, it will create your identity that you can do. I'm happy I invest myself in this. So when you retire, you will retire to, oh, I'm happy I did this. And you can tell your anak cucu that, ah, no, ah, to umak kan, buat ni tau, ha, orang tu, ya, you know. Then my, when I, when I listen to my kids tell their friends what their mom is doing, I'm like, it's meaningful, but maybe not measurable. You want to, you want to have that, you know. Because we live not just for shipping <laughs> and yes, it just the suddenly justifies ourselves, but that's for so if you are struggling between these two and say, Am I only doing this? What about my hobby? What about what about helping others that is not my turn? Yeah, but the strategy is you this first. Save yourself first. Jalan kan tanggung jawab anda dahulu. You know? Ah. Uh, and then uh, do this more. Once you get this then then you can go. You are win win. Okay? Let's see. So, again, okay, I put that the spillover effect over there. Okay? Okay, we talk about this also in terms of making time. One is the solid time, the blocks, the red blocks just now, and uh, or the time blocks, or energy block in a way. If you, can, if you want to put time as in energy, you block your energy only for that. So this is requiring the deep thinking, the one that I draw, uh, the brain is not for high attention, high quality, your best for deep time. Reserve this during your time that you don't, it's very, like Dr. Mazia has it during her Wednesday morning and Friday afternoon. Yeah? So, and then the to-do time, I will accumulate all my pain. Apa nak sign? Mana sini? Okay, done. Okay. Other things that need to be completed, your list of more. And then the rest you just put in between now. Huh? Once you know what's your solid time, protect. Protect it like it's your life. No? Protect your solid time. If you're... I remember those days when my kids were still young. Um, when they sleep, they want mama. They want mama to sleep. You know, they want something else. <laughs> but yeah. So I asked my husband, can you please lock the door and let me cry inside the room. My husband will... No, they don't want daddy, daddy don't have that susu. <laughs> so, my husband will have to become like, uh, uh, not listening anything. Just lock the door and mama have to work outside of the door. But those were the days, no more, no more. Those were when I was doing admin work that is really that urgent and important at the same time. It's very hard, yeah? 
But don't I don't I, I don't do that often lah. I mean, anak kan. But if you have to, I I remember those days when I had to do that. Yeah, I want to draw something here. Reflecting back on this one. Okay. I want to draw the KPI flower pot. You know when you have a flower pot? Okay. Let's say you plant a rose. So you have uh, our KPI is like our stick that the scaffold, rose scaffold. Oh, apa yang ada this thing? So that when it grows, it grows. Okay, so maybe for for research you have to do this much, for teaching you have to do this much. Yeah? So your your tree will grow like that lah. Okay. So this is the minimum. Okay, so the, so this is the measurable one. This one. So if everybody meets this standard, you know how you go to uh, Kuala Lumpur Street, they have all the trees trim the same? Yeah, green thing. Yeah, so, so it's like the standard required. So UM or any university, like any research university perhaps, they have their standard that if you if you are unable to grow, let's say you are you only grow up to this much. Every year, every year you only grow this much. The expectation is here. So you will be seen as not fitting into their standard. So you need to work on identifying where that's why I say do this first. For you to survive, for you to fit into it first. The next one is a meaningful one. The meaningful one is when you start to have. Let's say for me, my mommy's lab is here. My modules, my student being happy, my research. People from the hospital can stand after not being able to stand for many years. It becomes that. But, so this is the meaningful one, and I want to build this more. Then it becomes a beautiful flower pot. And the one that came out, yang tadi tu, yang only the green one, yeah? So I can have many. But, if I only do the meaningful one, without thinking of the measurable one, how does my flower pot look like? It will flower, but it will flower very bebas. You know very bebas? Like, like straight up. Okay. You have said, hmm, we are confused. Yes, you are good, but uh, uh, do you meet the height? Do you meet the circumference? Hmm. Maybe go to some other, some other university. Some of you can appreciate your business, business model, the entrepreneurship. I don't know, the, but every week go into uh, diving and get some specimen, you know, but, but there's no paper that comes with it. Okay, so maybe this is only the meaningful, so you can be as pretty and as abstract and as, 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 as exotic as you want. But it will be the meaningful one, yes, lots of meaningful one, but it doesn't fit into the manual, unless kebetulan. Kebetulan, okay, some people say, I will do whatever I like. If, if it fits the university, it fits the university. Meaning you are allowing your your random happiness pill let it until it becomes until it becomes the same level as this. Okay. Which is a bit hard because it's not um, you leave it to chance and luck and how people accept you, right? But if you only do this You only do this. Yes. Pick the measurables and then make special. Maybe my flower is like this. In branch flower is something else. The sapphire flowers is more colorful. <laughs> yeah. 
PR Not even kenaikan pangkat uh, Sometimes uh, contract, extension of contract and things like that yeah. They will have this measurable part And they have the other category which is How helpful you are, how visible you call it Some, some say, some call it visibility, some call it yeah. You mean the identity, do, you, do, do someone see you as something Someone that is uh, useful or not You're not useful, that's not the right word Special, yeah, yeah, yeah. So be, because um, yes, you work hard and you get this, and you can even go higher, 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 exceed, exceed, exceed. But you don't have that meaningful characteristic, that identity that you want to bring to the table. That yes, that is you and natural. She has done so much in terms of policy or whatever. Policy. Yeah, so that's how, if it makes sense to you, yeah, the, the three flower pots. Yeah. Measurable, meaningful, so I would say if it's, if it's hard for you to balance, you would want to do the, the survival one, the green one first, focus on that, so that at least you fit. At least you fit, and then they, they don't advise you to be removed. The flower pot from them. This flower pot, this flower in this flower pot, I've been giving and giving and giving in terms of selling them. Um, you then decide whether to do or to delegate. 
There's two things you can do. You can do it yourself, or you can delegate. I always find delegating to be the most um, useful technique. We work in a team anyway. In this day and age, no one works alone anymore. Everyone will have their team. So if you have the, the ability to delegate, you do delegate. Right? Make the time to do it. I even had my PhD student delegate tasks to me. Doctor, saya dah buat ni, doktor buat ni boleh tak? Ada, tak buat, saya tak marah. Doktor boleh tak tolong saya bayang ni? Oh, okay. Now I know I'm doing the need and I know the requirement and I decide to do it. And she can't do it. No, she can't do it. Number three, make the time to do it. Find where, if it's if you don't have time right now, maybe next week, maybe next three days, find the time to do it. And number four, see through it. Make sure it is done. So that, remember the gun check now, it is done part. So that if it has to do with you allocating time to it, make sure it's done as, as required, not as best as you can. You know, I, I'm not saying as best as you can, as required as you can get. And as quick as you can, because you want to get it out of the way. Okay? If it is requiring more thinking, then give that thinking. If it doesn't, don't have to give that much thinking. This may mean pass it to the right person or get it back from the right person. If you don't know if it's done or not, is this done? I think it's done. So you submit. So the review will say, oh, it's not done. Please put in this and that. If it's administration task, then you ask, is this enough? Is this okay. But try not to ask too many mini, 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 mini questions. You will get, people will get annoyed. So then you you can do it if you want them to be annoyed and not ask you to do any more work. But yeah, actually you want you want to have the healthy relationship in the team, so yeah. And then I get the feedback from the right person. Not get feedback from person who like like my husband. How about get up people need? How I do I get a you know? Get feedback from the right person. Whoever provides you the task, maybe he's not the one who could give the right feedback. Then you identify samples. Who can I ask for this? Or oh, ask this person. She was doing it all this while. So yeah, find that but before you keep asking her and asking them. You want to say something? No. Okay. And number five, differentiate between done versus done and done. The one that we celebrated just now, yeah? So I, I hope this one is clear. Priority, this Dr. Sophia is an expert in this. Um, important, not important, urgent, not urgent. So if you can, you have business management, can come in again, and be again. So um, this always happens. So we understand there's urgent and important. We have not urgent, not important. We have urgent but not important. Delicate. Ask someone to do it. Don't waste your precious energy bring on that. Okay? It's urgent but not important to get someone to pay. Uh, like I mentioned, oh we have to send uh, five children from UM. They are doing urgent but not important to them. So I don't want to be the one that is feeling up here. Yeah. So it's important to me. Okay? Not urgent, not important, you take charge. Eliminate, align, okay? Not urgent but important. Schedule. This is the big one. The grants, the future planning, strategic thinking, requires initiatives, spend more time here. Schedule it, follow through it. Urgent but important, reduce. Don't have too many here. This is in theory. In theory, you have uh, quadrant number two, urgent and important, sorry, this one. Urgent and important. In theory, how we prioritize, if it's urgent and it's important, like paying tax. It's already July. April. 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 To business kind of July. Urgent and important. Okay? You do that first. You prioritize that one. Uh, not urgent but important. This one. You schedule. Not urgent but important. The long term. Because it's long term. Investment. Uh, maybe the thesis writing itself for the two of you. Technical paper yang Q1 tu yang this is important, this is important, 
my career, life changing career, I could apply promotion because of this. But you keep it, it's not tempting yet, it's not tempting yet, it's not there yet. Uh, in theory, that should be number two. Not important, but urgent. But in practice, people always do the urgent and the legend. Time will always be the, the factor that screams at you the loudest. Human nature, they will tend to respond to the voice that screams to them the loudest. That's why we respond to our mom, the, the first. Thank you to them. 
that and I treasure that. It's not easy to get someone to say honest and honest thing can be, oh, you look pretty today. It's honest, honest, but critical. Honest and critical. Why did you do it that way? Oh, you know what you're doing? It's kind of our normal, you know, that kind of comments. And I treasure that. If I get someone to say things like that to me, that friendship level just go 10 times multiple. Because he or she is able to give me honest feedback and critical that I don't see. People tend to not say negative things towards you because they want to not hurt your feeling, they will justify that I'm not in your shoe, they will say you have your own rights and things like that. But if it's not right, you have to say it's not right. Yeah. So if I get that, I'm so thankful if I can get it. Um, and you have to take it uh, positively. Lah. Sometimes people when they give honest, people give them honest feedback, critical feedback, they can't take it, they jump all about they feel that they don't want to be friends with them anymore. So then it's on your disadvantage. Lah. Okay. And of course, the emotional support. Sometimes you just go out for lunch together, have a good time. It doesn't have to be long, but emotional support. Being an academic, you need emotional support. So groups like this, you know, we vent with each other what is expected and what the challenges are. Yeah? And uh, again, time sensitive. If you can see, like uh, Damira say, she has troubles because she can't sense the time. Uh, everything will become last minute because people will start screaming, where's the deadline? It's coming, where is it? No? So if you yourself be time sensitive, you can visualize your tasks and you can plan. Then you yourself get to, okay, I think I need this in three days. You, you, back, you back calculate and you, you sensitive towards your time, you can, you can do that. Differentiate between the to do, time to do the work versus time for meeting to discuss it versus the deadline itself. Sometimes you schedule the meeting about that work. Tapi kerjanya tak jalan-jalan juga. Oh, this is not done. Let's have a meeting. Uh, we have to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go back to square one. Oh, still not done yet. Let's have another meeting. Oh, meeting, meeting, meeting. No, schedule the time to do the work. You don't have to have a meeting. Sometimes I run my first conference, international conference, I pass. With very minimal meeting, everything was upset. Can you do this? Let's do this. What needs to be done? And people, have, because um, it was organized by many different people who are in the field, not from UM. So from UIE, and then UITM, and from UTM, and UTHM, and different different university. And we just use WhatsApp. And it becomes an international conference we earn about 30 something thousand ringgit. Just to watch that and then say, Asa, how do you do it? Because I know the difference between to do and the meeting to do. Sometimes they are too obsessed with, let's have a meeting. Or the makan, or the bilik, the pak, 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 in your Google Calendar, the do part, not the do part and the deadline. Okay? By the time you reach the deadline, it's too late. You cannot do it anymore. Then you have to wait for the cycle for the grant. Always my thing. Always my thing. Okay? So, these are just other tasks, other tips. Okay? Some maybe arrange your tasks by week, or you want to group the common tasks, you want to use technology, you want to identify the time of the day, you want to tell the tasks, you want to delegate. All these depends on you, what works for you best. I'm not a technology person, so I can't advise on that, but if you find something that works for you, please go ahead. If you want to share, you can share. Don't expect people to follow exactly, yeah? Um, what I'm sharing in these four hours is just for us to have some realization of how things might be different if you do it in, in a different way, how to think about it differently. But if it doesn't work for you, please ignore it. If it works for you, try to do more of it. Right? Um, I had these two uh, also like a, like a encouragement la, for those of you who have to start from the bottom and the younger ones who will enter the department. Okay, we have this say for you. <laughs> <laughs> Practical know-how, you will get that practical know-how message. Nothing is, but you have to be strategic on how 
of men chat eh? Don't overwhelm because you answer too much without asking yourself what you want And then start small and be consistent This uh, is some, somehow it applies to anything Journal papers, uh, research, teaching, teaching material Many, many things, many skills So if there's any other tips to share before we end Because 